Compact SUVs represent one of the most competitive segments on the road. The Hyundai Tucson made a splash last year, winning critical acclaim and plenty of sales for its blend of style, value and poise. Kia's Sportage aims to do even more, with more equipment, a sharper price and the best warranty in the business. We're putting these against two of the most established names in the business, the Toyota RAV4 and the Honda CRV, to discover which one is the best deal for modern motoring families. We've tested the cars in turbo diesel, automatic and mid-range form that represents a good balance of price and equipment. Unfortunately, Toyota was only able to supply a RAV4 diesel in its top-end cruiser form. Now, setting aside that car's two-tone leather, driver aids and sunroof, it's fundamentally the same car as a RAV4 GXL, so we'll be using that mid-range car as a price point to compare it with its rivals. The updated RAV4 GXL costs $41,990 plus on-road costs. The Toyota RAV4 is one of the original compact SUVs and it's really developed a following over years, making it one of the most popular cars in its class. The steering is a little bit slow and the ride can be a bit choppy. Given that the RAV4 was one of the original SUVs, it kind of makes sense that this model is the most four-wheel drive-like on the road. It's a fair bit of roll, you can feel the car really tip around when you go around corners and uh, it kind of lacks the precision of some of its rivals, particularly the Hyundai and the Kia. It has a 2.2 litre diesel engine that makes 110 kilowatts and 340 newton metres. If you give it a bit of throttle, it's quite loud. It's a, it's a raucous engine and it's six speed automatic transmission. Can hesitate a little bit and it's a, probably the least confident transmission of the four that we have here today. But there is plenty to like about the RAV4. The interior layout for me is a win. This heavily sculpted dashboard with a sort of a two tier setup is something that's quite interesting to look at and pretty fundamentally easy to use as well. There's plenty of space throughout the car and it has the most SUV-like driving position of the lot. Now, if you're into sports cars, that's probably a bad thing where you feel like you're sitting a little bit high in the seat with the steering wheel a little low in your lap. But the people that buy these sort of cars will be all about having a little bit of extra vision on the road and uh, just being able to see what you're doing. And that, this is a winner. The fresh Honda CRV is the dearest car here at 44,290 plus on-road costs. But you do get a lot of equipment for your money and the most advanced driveline here. One of the things I really love about cars is the way that manufacturers just constantly chip away and evolve the breed, making cars better and better as years go on. And while this isn't an all-new Honda CRV, it does represent a fair improvement over the previous model. The Honda's 1.6-litre turbo diesel is compact and efficient, and it's paired with a new 9-speed automatic transmission that drives all four wheels. The new engine is an absolute gem, and the interior presentation on this car is a little bit beyond what we've expected from the Honda CRV in the past. Some SUVs are tuned for sporty handling characteristics, but this is not one of them. Instead, Honda's gone for a plusher tune. It's a car that's very comfortable to ride around in, but as a driver, it does let you down a little bit. There's a lot of roll, and it's not the most immediate to respond to steering, but it's a pretty comfortable thing to be in generally. It's a car that's more about families and passengers than the driver, and in this segment, that's no bad thing. The Hyundai Tucson is the car to beat, having won our comparison test for petrol models last year. It returns on a high as the best-selling SUV in Australia last month and as a five-star safety proposition following recent updates to the popular model. The Tucson is priced around the middle of our quartet at $40,240 plus on-road costs. It comes with a 2.0-litre turbo diesel engine that offers 136 kilowatts and 400 newton metres of torque, using a six-speed auto and all-wheel drive to propel the car. Hyundai's turbo diesel motor is a strong and smooth performer that has a really great partner in its six-speed automatic transmission. It's also sharp to drive with excellent body control and minimal roll that really makes it fun to punt along at a bit of pace. But that's not really what these sort of cars are about and luckily there's more to the Tucson than its dynamic prowess. Hyundai is no longer a rock bottom value brand, it's a genuine contender in Australia and one of the top five best selling car manufacturers in the country. People used to worry about the quality of these sort of cars and that's not something you really need to be concerned about anymore, but if you listen to this, there are a few little squeaks and things that you hear in this car going over bumps that have let it down a little bit during our testing. The Kia Sportage uses the same 2 litre turbo diesel engine as the Tucson, where it produces the same 136 kilowatt and 400 newton metre outputs. Crucially though, it's a fair bit cheaper at 37,990 plus on road costs. Jumping in and out of these four cars today, it's safe to say that the Kia has been the surprise of the bunch. It's a very good car. But the way that the Sportage has impressed us shouldn't come as any surprise at all. The previous gen car was a bit of a favourite at drive and it even won its class in Drive's Car of the Year awards. The Sportage shares its basics with the Tucson, which, as we know, is a good car. 
but the Kia builds on it in a few ways by doing things a little bit differently. So to begin with, it's got bigger wheels, which lends it a sharper turning response when you're steering, and a pretty decent ride as well. Now this is one of the more dynamic machines in the group. We use the term car-like when talking about SUVs, which I, I don't like because it feels a bit lazy. But in essence, when we say that an SUV is car-like, what we mean is that it doesn't have the body roll and the, the loose responses and the sharp ride of a four-wheel drive. Instead, it's something that is basically engineered to drive well, and that is certainly the case with the Sportage. Kia's done a great job with the interior too. We've got a massive touchscreen here, plus a secondary driver display, well laid out controls, and fairly good seats, although they do feel a little bit flat compared to the cloth items in the Tucson. I really do like most of what's on offer in the Kia. If there's one thing I'm a little bit unsure about, it's the styling, particularly around the front end. Now, Kia's design director, Peter Schreier, has gone with a bit of an interesting move for this one, moving the headlights up towards the bonnet, and uh, it's an unconventional look, definitely, for this sort of car. Some people find it striking. For me personally, it's very polarizing and it'll be interesting to see whether the Sportage's styling hurts its sales. Kia's warranty program is also important as it covers the car for seven years and unlimited kilometers. The deal also includes seven years of roadside assistance and cap price servicing. Now the Hyundai comes closest to matching that with a five year unlimited kilometer deal, whereas Toyota and Honda are a little bit tight fisted, only offering three years of warranty support. All four of these cars are outstanding, and we'd happily recommend you buy any of them, but one stood out, and that car is the Kia Sportage. The Sportage is a great car. It drives well, has an excellent engine, and plenty of features too. But most importantly, it's a great deal. The best deal for modern motoring families.